Minecraft. Where do we begin with Minecraft? I didn't really start to understand what Minecraft was all about until I watched a documentary called Alone in the Wilderness where a guy goes out to Alaska and just survives on his own, makes his own tools, makes his own home, and just survives off the land, you know, living with the animals. And that's when it kind of hit me like, oh, that's why Minecraft is such a big sensation. It's because it kind of taps into that very primitive part of humanity that's in all of us. Trying to explain what Minecraft is, is kind of like trying to explain what Lego is. In the Lego universe, everything centers around the idea of interlocking plastic bricks. And in the Minecraft universe, everything centers around the idea of placing digital blocks. This idea of placing digital blocks in a 3D pixelated world is Minecraft in its simplest sense. However, like in the case with Lego, it gets more complicated very quickly. And if you just think about Legos, yeah, it's just about simply connecting plastic pieces together, but there's Lego kits, Lego freestyle builders, Lego movies, Lego stop motion animation videos, Lego robotics, Lego amusement parks, and more. Similarly, there are Minecraft single player modes, multiplayer modes, mods, merchandise, 3D printing, mobile versions, education versions, an annual convention, and more. So, it's not really easy to wrap Minecraft up into one simple definition, but just to start off, we can just look at the term Minecraft. It's essentially two words sandwiched together. Mine, referring to the mining of resources, and craft, referring to the crafting of items from those resources. The actual game of Minecraft varies from modes with specific objectives to modes with absolute freedom. In a way, it's the ultimate digital sandbox. As of February 2017, over 121 million copies have been sold across all platforms, making it the second best-selling video game of all time, falling behind only Tetris. So let's go back all the way to the very beginning of Minecraft. It was never intended to be a major success. So we're going to go to 2009, when a young developer named Marcus Person, known among Minecrafters today as Notch, got inspiration to develop a new game from playing a game called Infiniminer, which was discontinued shortly after he discovered it. He began to release versions of what was then called The Cave, and it tended to attract players with background knowledge in programming and computers. There was no big studio behind it, and no outside investors, and no advertising campaigns. Person simply made the game available to download. He founded Mojang Specifications in 2009, and the name of the game was changed to Minecraft Order of the Stone, and then finally simply Minecraft. And it quickly became a word of mouth sensation. Various online platforms helped to grow Minecraft's popularity. Users would watch instructional videos on YouTube and Twitch, discuss tinkerings on forums like Reddit and Facebook, and formalize knowledge with the Minecraft wiki. Cross-compatibility between machines allowed players on a range of PCs to play, and they were even able to create modifications for the game to share with other players. A convention called Minecraft Con, later known as MineCon, was hosted by Mojang for the first time in 2010. Throughout 2011, more advances to the game were introduced, and Minecraft was officially released at MineCon 2011. Immediately after, a guy named Jens Bergenston, known as Jeb, took over creative control of the game. He introduced many new features and grew the game's fan base to higher levels. In 2014, Mojang was acquired by Microsoft for $2.5 billion. If you want to try out Minecraft for yourself, there's many different platforms available to choose from. There's usually a fee attached to the game, anywhere from 7 to 27 US dollars, but demo versions are sometimes available. Originally, it was a PC game, but since its release, there have been a number of tablets and consoles offering the game. The main mobile version is called Minecraft Pocket Edition, and it is featured on iOS, Android, Amazon, and Windows devices. For console players, Minecraft is available on Xbox 360, Xbox One, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Wii U, and it was just released on the Nintendo Switch. There's even a version of Minecraft on the Raspberry Pi single board computer. Last year, Microsoft launched an official Oculus Rift virtual reality version for Windows 10. And for educators, there's a version called Minecraft Education Edition that is built for classrooms, and it gives instructors the tools they need to teach a range of core STEM topics. There's a standalone narrative version of Minecraft called Minecraft Story Mode, and it basically gives the game a plot. In addition to these versions, there are plenty of so-called Minecraft clones out there. Games like Ace of Spades, Castle Miner, Craft World, Fortress Craft, Terraria, Total Miner, and more. 
And what you're seeing right here is footage from a free Roblox game, and it offers a Minecraft-like building style. Minecraft is a movement, and it's had a significant impact on the youth culture of today. There's all kinds of Minecraft merchandise, from clothing, foam pickaxes, toys of creatures in the game. There's also Minecraft handbooks, poster books, and magazines. And interestingly, there's even a Lego set based on Minecraft, so there's kind of a, a cross between the universes there. In the game itself, there's several different modes to choose from, but certain features remain universal throughout. For example, the controls, at least when referring to the PC version of the game, are fairly universal. Okay, so your standard controls in Minecraft are, for movement, you're going to be using WASD, also known as WASDA. So you're going to push W to go forward and S to go back, A to strafe left and D to strafe right, and spacebar, of course, is to jump. Now in this version of Minecraft, you can actually walk up to a block and it'll jump up for you. To scroll through your inventory in your bar at the bottom there, you just use your mouse wheel and you can scroll through all your different tools and items that you have. So um, for example, if I wanted to uh, select the, the cobblestone blocks that I have, I would just line that up in the bottom bar there with the scroll wheel and then if I wanted to place the block I would just right click okay and that's basically how you build is just by right clicking um, where you want to place a piece now if I wanted to put a torch on this thing that I just built what I would do is go and select the torch and then just right click where I want to place it and now that will stay lit now if I want to run what I'm gonna do is double tap the W key so I tap it twice real quick and then I can start running now keep in mind this will make you start to get hungry you got your hunger bar there um, so you might not want to run too often if you don't have food but lucky for me I do have food so I'm gonna go and select it and to eat when you have food that's selected I have some cooked pork I believe this is I'm gonna just hold the secondary click on my mouse and then I can eat it and that will actually make my life bar go up and by the way, the, um, the way I'm turning and, and looking all around is just by moving the mouse. Now as for the actual inventory, if you want to open up to see all your items, what you're going to do is push the E key and this will show me everything that I have. All right. So if I want to craft something, what I'm going to do is actually bring it up here in this little crafting section that I have and I'm just clicking on pieces and they get they kind of get stuck to the cursor and then I click again your left click and it will drop it now this uh, stick with a coal will actually create a torch that I can use so I'm just gonna click it and pull it out and now if I want to drop an item what I can do is either select it and just click somewhere outside of the inventory and that will actually throw it or I can I can have it selected in my hand and I can push the Q key. So if I wanted to drop this pickaxe, I would just push Q and that throws it. And that's actually very helpful for when you want to share, you know, different items with your friends. The world that the player enters when opening Minecraft is what's called a 3D procedurally generated world, meaning all the rivers and mountains and caves are made by programming algorithms as opposed to an artist creating the base level manually. This element of randomness makes the game fun and usually ensures a unique experience. And these worlds are huge. They're like eight times larger than the surface of Earth in terms of scale. So let's take a look at the single player. There's a few different modes to choose from. The two most popular are called survival mode and creative mode. And you can think of these two as basically mortal mode and god mode. In survival mode, which is the default game mode, you must gather resources from the environment around you and try not to be killed from either starvation or physical harm. You'll want to be on the lookout for monsters called creepers who basically walk up to you and explode, destroying either you or whatever's around you. In creative mode, you have access to infinite resources and it's almost impossible to die in this mode. There's other modes like hardcore, which is similar to survival, but when you die, not only is the game over and you lose all your stuff, but the entire world itself is deleted. There's also adventure mode, 
which is kind of like a hybrid between creative and survival mode, but there's an emphasis on exploration and spectating. To better understand the default survival mode, let's actually play it. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is click on single player and click create new world. And I'm going to change the name to Austin's Cool World. It'll actually, it'll say once I save it that it's a um, survival world. And you can call it whatever you want. You just, you're basically naming it for your own records. And what I'm going to do is make sure it's set to survival, the game mode. And you can leave the default world options. And I'm going to click create new world. Um, so, th like I said, there's no real direction or instructions on what you're supposed to do. But there's certainly ways that you can survive in this world. So, usually the first thing that you want to do is go and start punching a tree. So that you can, you can harvest, I guess is the word, some wood from it. Okay, so basically I'm just going up to the tree and holding down the mouse button and you see I'm, I'm actually punching out wooden blocks from this tree. Okay, so I'm going to leave that, but um, what I was going to say is that the sun is coming up, starts you out, uh, starts you out right in the morning, and when that sun goes down it's going to get dark and when it gets dark there's going to be monsters so what you're going to want to do is survive so first thing i'm going to do is push e on the keyboard and by the way i just have the default controls and this is your inventory and you have a small little crafting section right here you can put armor on over here um, and what i want to do is take the pieces of wood that i punched out of the tree and put them up here where it says crafting and if you look, they, you can actually turn the pieces of wood into planks. Now, ultimately, what I want to do, I'm going to keep clicking. You can hold shift and click once and get all those at once. But now, I got these wooden planks, which can be used for building. By the way, if you want to place a block down, if you're holding a block, it doesn't matter what material, what you're going to do is look at where you want to place it and right-click, and you see the block is placed. Okay? I can... I can build a house, but actually what I want to do first is find a cave because I don't have enough resources to really get a house going for the night because um, time is definitely an issue. You, you want to keep in mind that you, you know time is limited. And um, let's see, yep, the sun's already going up. So what I want to do is actually make a crafting table, and that's the craft part of Minecraft. I want to actually craft something. I want to craft some tools. So what I'm going to do is push E, and first thing I'm going to craft technically is the crafting table if you don't count the wooden planks that I use to make the table. So what I do is just put the four like that, and I have a little crafting table. Okay, and I can click that and pull it out, put it in my... Um, actually, I didn't really explain this part. You have your inventory here, which is this this big grid right here. Looks like it's a three by nine grid. You can put all your different materials that you collect. It looks like I already got a spruce sampling, probably because I punched a leaf. And with that, I can actually grow a tree. But... Um, the row at the bottom here, the the nine row, the line nine square um, row at the bottom. This is what you're actually holding in your hands. And so I put the crafting table down here, and I can cycle through that list just by using the scroll wheel. And what I'm going to do is select the crafting table, and I can right click just like place in a block. I'm going to place the crafting table, and I'm going to right click to open it up. And you notice now I have this three by three grid. And that gives me nine uh, uh, squares to use. And what I'm going to do is first make some sticks. So um, essentially what I'm doing is creating, um, I guess I'll create an axe. So to create sticks, well, I should say to create an axe, you need a stick and you need um, different materials for the head of the axe. But you need sticks for the handle. So what I'm going to do is put two planks just like this and you see I get four sticks from that okay and uh, let me make a couple more sticks um, I can do is click a couple times and I got 16 sticks actually I just accidentally got 20 sticks okay and I still got 14 planks so what I'm gonna do with these sticks is click on them and then right click to place that's uh, by the way I didn't explain that before but you wanna right click to actually place something in this um, in this menu and it's just it's one of those things where you just gotta kinda play around with it to get the feel for it the right clicks but there's um, you can experiment with holding the shift key and see what happens um, because you can you can really get really quick at using this but what I'm gonna do to make an axe is 
put the planks just like that and you see a little axe appears uh, might as well make all the tools um, out of wood here so that's an axe if you want to make a sword you're gonna put one stick and then two planks like that if you want to make a pitchfork or pickaxe rather what you're gonna do is do two sticks and then three across the top so I got a pickaxe and that's good for digging through the ground the axe is good for digging through wood the sword is for attacking enemies and the only thing I don't have right now is a shovel and you do the shovel with one plank up top and then two sticks and I got a shovel okay so these are your main tools that you're gonna be using and what I want to do is actually destroy this crafting table with the axe that way I can take it with me and what I want to do right now is actually find a cave that I can stay in for the night and the caves are good because you can actually um, I'm gonna go over here because it looks like there's a cave over here the caves are good because uh, it'll protect you and you can actually dig down through the earth and find different um, materials that you can use you can make better axes better swords and it's, it's just that there's a whole there's a whole assortment of different things about this game. You're, you're honestly, you're gonna ha probably have to use the Minecraft wiki. Um, you just just look up Minecraft wiki in Google, and you'll see all the different uh, things you can learn about this game. I don't see any caves over here, so I'm gonna keep going. Um, I'm gonna harvest this wood right here by using the axe. And you notice using the axe on the tree is a lot quicker than using my fist and punching the thing. So I'm going to get this wood because once I go underground, I'm not going to be able to um, get any more wood. There's no wood underground. So I'm going to get as much wood as I can right here. Um, get a couple more pieces because I'm basically just trying to survive the night. And looks like there's something over here. I'm hoping there's a cave. Um, this looks interesting. Um, also what I'm looking for is right here, this coal this um, discolored, th this this uh, rock right here that has little black dots on it, that is a piece of coal. So what I'm going to use is use the pickaxe, the wooden pickaxe, and actually dig out that coal, and I got a little piece of coal. And with the coal, I can use it with a stick to make a torch. I'll show you that right now. So I'm going to push E, take my piece of coal, put it like that, put a stick under it, and I get four torches. Okay. And I'm going to put that torch right there so you can see it lights things up. Now, enemies cannot spawn in the light. So wherever you, wherever you get yourself um, situated for the night, you're going to want to fill it with torches. That way you can um, make sure that, you know, it just makes you safer for monsters. Um, and now that I, I see a bunch of animals here, I'm actually going to take one of these cows. Um, I'm going to kill one of these cows so I can get the meat. Um, so let me go ahead and walk over him and I should have yep I got three things of raw beef so you can eat this without um, without cooking it you can eat it raw like that but what I'm gonna do is show you how you can actually make a furnace and cook it up and that will really help your hunger which will also allow your your health bar to go back up but I'm just kinda walking around and no two worlds are the same so let's see what I can find this might be a cave down here yes that looks actually promising but very deep so I could use the shovel and go down I might as well show you how to use the shovel so I'm gonna pull out the shovel and then just whoa I did not expect that so there's that was actually a ledge and I wanna make it down to the bottom there is fall damage if you can see wow I almost fell off the side um, one of the ways that you can prevent yourself from falling off the side of a mountain is hold the the shift key and you can walk and it won't allow you to to fall so I'm gonna use my pickaxe and try and make my way down here I'm trying to see the best way possible. Um, oh, look at that colored rock right there is iron. And iron allows you to make very strong um, tools. And and actually, this this these rocks that I'm, that I'm digging right now, these are actually cobblestones. And these allow you to make strong tools as well. Not as strong as iron, but stronger than, than wooden um, uh, uh, tools. And... Yeah, this is going to be tough to get down without getting some damage. Um, what I could do is dig down straight through the rock, but that would actually take some time. I can't really make it back up, so I, I, I pretty much don't have a choice here. i got to find my way down. Um, this might be a good time to put a torch up so I can see. And let's see. Yeah, here we go. I can... 
Oh, look, there's a skeleton down there. I do not want to deal with him just yet. There's these um, skeleton monsters that have bows and arrows. Uh, and they... Looks like one already took a shot. You see that? That's an arrow. So, um, what I'm going to do... Let's go ahead and go back here. And... Let's go the other direction. Here's some more iron. Oh, you know what? This is my spot. Look at this. This looks great. I didn't see this before, but this is a little nook. This, I think, is where I'm going to spend my night. Yeah, look at There's all this iron. It looks like it keeps going, but there's some coal here, which is good. So what I'm going to do is take the coal so that I can make more torches and I can kind of see my way around here. Now, there might be monsters because it's dark. But I'm just going to get this coal. Oh, yep, I can hear monsters. So... Um, let me get out of here while I can and um, make some torches over here and start lighting this place up and eventually I'll I'll probably have to seal it because it looks like it just keeps going um, so uh, I want to keep some sticks so let me make I'll make 16 torches to keep the sticks and it looks like I got a mushroom along the way here put the wood up here I got my crafting table now you see I have 13 cobblestone um, I can, I'm gonna use that in a minute but let me go ahead and put some torches in here light this place up and see what the heck is down here. I'm actually going to fill this part in right here. Right in front of the coal. Oh man, there's a lot of stuff down here. So I want to get that iron. Let me go ahead and fill down this part. I think I should have some dirt. What do I have? I guess I'll use cobblestone. I don't like to use the cobblestone because I haven't made my cobblestone tools yet. But I'm going to start filling in this section right here just by placing the blocks. And I'm going to run out of blocks. But... I can start um, filling this section in so that um, when monsters spawn, they won't be able to come in through here. Monsters cannot dig. Okay. So let me just keep digging here. And by the way, if you notice at the um, where the tools are, there are different. Um, th there's uh, there's a little health bar on the on the uh, on the tool itself. You see that green bar, and that will show you how much life quote unquote is left in the the tool itself so let me go ahead and fill this in okay um that looks pretty good just fill in the rest here i got two more blocks boom boom all right now i think it is about time to make a cobblestone pickaxe so what i'm gonna do is get some of these pieces here and the first night i'm usually underground just kind of digging and, and making tools and making all kinds of stuff. Eventually, I'm going to make armor with all this iron. But uh, basically, the idea is you can do whatever you want. And I find it incredibly addic addicting because it taps into that, that, you know, that core instinct within us all. So let's see. I'm going to keep cutting this out. I'm going to get this coal here. And let's get all this coal. I'm going to get all this coal. Um, it's always good to make stairs wherever you are because if you're getting chased, you want a, an easy exit. So right now, actually, I should fill in this other side here. Um, maybe I can put a door over here. But yeah, I think it's getting to be night at this point. So let's see. Yep, the stars are out. It is night. Um, I want to say monsters are not going to be able to come in through this section, but they might be able to. But for right now, I do want to make... Um, some cobblestone tools. So what I'm going to do is set up my crafting table right here and what I'm going to do is take a couple sticks and put the cobblestone just like the wood planks before and I get a little stone pickaxe. Okay, might as well do this with all the tools. So what I'm going to do is get an axe, kind of organize things. You can organize it however you want obviously but um, let me get a couple more sticks for handles and I'm gonna make a shovel actually I'll make a sword stone sword and a stone shovel okay and now these these will be more powerful stronger they'll last longer and you'll be able to chop through things quicker ultimately what you want to get is diamond tools but um, let me put up a couple more torches because this is my little area. I'm going to make sure it's nice and lit. And yeah, I can go down. I'm going to start, now that I have a cobblestone 
pickaxe I can actually chop quicker so I'm gonna go up to this iron here get this iron and from the iron I'll be able to make some armor and I can make iron tools which are which are even stronger than the stone tools so let me get this iron I should already have some but that looks good I got that iron and what I want to make is a furnace because I can a I can cook my food but I can also um, I gotta use the crafting table I can also use the furnace to I can smelt down the iron and and get little iron um, pieces from that that I can use so let's see what I want to do is make a I want to make a uh, furnace so what I'm gonna do is go just like this use the cobblestone and make a ring around the crafting table here and I get a little furnace okay I'm gonna place that right next to the crafting table right click on the furnace put my coal down in there as fuel and first thing I'm gonna do is cook up I'll cook up a piece of meat uh, might as well cook it all actually and the furnace is going and that's gonna cook up the meat so that it's better tasting and it will give me more life um, when I need it and I'm gonna start filling in this um, section here eventually I'll, I'll put a door right here uh, let me get this piece of iron while I'm over here because what I'm going to do next is smelt down the iron. Oop, switch to the axe by accident. I want the pickaxe. And let me just get this iron. There's a bunch of iron over here. Um, hoping there's not monsters. But let me go ahead and put a torch out here anyway. Actually, I should put a bunch of torches. Torches are good for um, locating where you are because at night you can see the torches. They really stand out. And um, if I fall down or something happens, you know, if I'm looking down from the surface, I can um, see where, where my little cave is. And what I can do on the side out here is put a little ladder, eventually using sticks. So, anyway, and this is just all fun stuff that I've learned just by playing around and seeing what people do online. But I got my steak here that's cooked. And let's go ahead and throw the iron on. And what that's going to do is create the iron pieces that I can actually use for armor and tools. So, let me get some more coal. Looks like there's another piece of iron right here. Alright, got all that coal. Dug that down. Um, let's see how the iron's doing over here. I got five iron pieces. So, I can start using that for tools, but let's just let it go. Keep going, I'm going to add the piece of iron um, that I just found and add more coal so that can just keep going maybe eat a piece of meat. You eat a piece of meat or any kind of food by and have it selected and right click, hold, and you actually eat. And you can see my health is going up because I had a nice piece of cooked steak. Okay. Now, um, I can also put a chest right here by um, actually opening up the crafting table and just like you make the furnace by making a ring around the crafting table with cobblestone you use um, wood planks and you can make a little chest okay and I'm gonna place the chest right here and with the chest you can actually put extra items that you have so I'll put the uh, mushroom and the spruce sapling that I found even the leather um, which can be used for armor but what I want is the iron armor so that should actually be just about ready at this point yep um, I'm gonna take these iron pieces and I'm gonna start making armor now I don't have enough pieces to make a full set of armor but I can show you how it works um, I'm going to pull it out of there now these iron pieces can actually be used for crafting so I'm going to go to the crafting table here and I'm going to make a helmet by just drawing a little um, looks like an N right there lowercase n um, at the top and I get a little helmet I'm going to pull that out I can make boots by going the two sides right here. By the way, I know all this because I use the Minecraft wiki. So um, it's just one of those things where y you can experiment with all uh, with all these pieces and figure out how to craft things. But it's a lot quicker to just go and learn how to do it. Um, I suppose that's why you're watching this tutorial. So um, what do I have? I have four pieces. What else can I make? I believe I can make a shield. Now, if my memory serves me correctly, I believe a shield is something like this. Maybe there's one out of there. See, this happens a lot, actually. I know the shield. There it is. So the shield is looks like a Y with wood and then an iron piece right there. Now, to put all this armor on, what I'm going to do is get out of the crafting table, push E, and I'm going to actually just drag these pieces up to the appropriate slots. 
um, the shield right here. And now I got a little shield. So this is good for those skeletons when they're shooting arrows at you. You can actually right click hold and, and that will stop their arrows. Sometimes it'll, it'll ricochet and go back at the skeleton. But at this point it looks like it's day. So I actually want to go up to the surface. Um, what would be the best way? Maybe I'll make a ladder. I said I'd do that so let me show you how to make a ladder. I go back to my crafting table. By the way this will be my little home base for a little bit. I'm gonna go to the crafting table and I'm gonna make a ladder. So I gotta make some sticks first. Might as well make all these sticks. I got 47 sticks and actually now that I think about it, I want to make a bunch of ladder pieces because I gotta make it up to the top of the surface. So if you have a, um, any kind of item on um, one of these squares, what you can do is just right click on it once and it'll cut it in half. Very, very helpful. Um, and what I'm gonna do is hold shift and click on the export thing here and that will get as many pieces of whatever item was crafted as possible. And I got five sticks left and I got 18 ladder pieces. So what I'm gonna do is go out to the outside here my little opening I should put a door here but it's day out I want to get out and explore so let's see I wanna build my ladder up I don't wanna fall um, I will put it right here so I'm gonna get rid of this torch and right click to place the ladder and I think I can place the ladder as I'm climbing yep so and let me get rid of this dirt piece by clicking and holding just like I don't think this is a dirt piece that took forever okay so this is where I can go down to get to my um, uh, my cave, I guess, my little nook. So I want to go around and explore. I want to get more resources. I want to get more wood pieces. And eventually, you know, I'm just going to survive. You can, you can really, you know, you can build a nice house and you can have uh, a garden and a farm with livestock. And you can really do a ton of things in this game. I just wanted to give you an idea of how I... Um, approach the Minecraft survival world. It is, like I said, very addicting. I love it. And I can save my world by hitting escape and hitting, hitting save and quit to title. And you can actually move the, um, you can move your saved world from computer to computer by, um, let's see, I, I can show you real quick. You want to go to, uh, on Windows 7 at least, you can go to your tools, folder options, and you want to make sure that all your hidden files are being shown. And then in your main disk directory, you're going to go to users, open up your username, and then go down to the hidden file called app data, and open up roaming, and go to dot minecraft, saves, and you can see Austin's cool, cool world right here. And I can actually take this and save it and uh, go to this world on a different computer. Um, and it's actually cross-compatible between Windows and Mac, so that's really cool. If you'd like to build without the hassle of actually working for the raw materials like we did in survival mode, then creative mode is the mode for you. It's also known as Lego mode. One of the things you can do in this mode is fly, and it makes the creative process seamless. There's really no limit to what you can make in Minecraft, it's, it's really up to your imagination. There's been a great deal of content made in creative, both online and offline. Players have reconstructed the Neuschwanstein Castle, a full-scale model of Denmark, and other elaborate structures just for fun. There's even been simulated computer hard drives created using special in-game pieces, and what you get is essentially a simulated digital computer in a simulated digital world, which I just think is so cool. So let's actually take a look at this creative mode. So just like survival mode, what you're going to do first is click single player and then create new world. But this time you're going to switch it from survival to creative. Okay. And I'll call it Austin's cool world. But let's go ahead and click create. And all right. So the world loaded up. And the biggest difference between creative mode and survival mode is that you can actually fly around in creative mode. So you do that by double tapping on the spacebar. And now I can use the spacebar to go up and hold the left shift to go down. So this this makes building much easier when you can actually um, you know fly. And when I push E, I have all of the different materials. Now I have I have pretty much 
I want to say everything that's available in Minecraft as far as tools and blocks and, and all that. So for example, if I wanted to use glass, I can just go ahead and put glass in my inventory. Um, I can put some bedrock here, which which you only find at the very depths of Minecraft worlds. And I'm flying around. I can double tap spacebar again to go back to my regular view. But um, let's go ahead and I can build something right here in the center. And just like in survival mode, the way you place something is by right clicking the ground where you want to place a block and I'm gonna go ahead and start building something this up and I think you get the idea um, you know it's just fun it's like it's like freestyle building with Legos you know in theory I could make this whole house out of glass that would be cool because I kind of like a nice view in my Minecraft house but um, it's just nice how you can you know just use your imagination I can um, I can go ahead and build a, a bridge that could take me out here but who needs a bridge when you can fly and let's light this place up. Oh, I have fallen into the ground, or into the water rather. And I am a pro. All right, and finish up. So, that is my nice little house in the creative world, and you can see how quickly I, I whipped that up, and yeah, that's creative mode. Once you've built something within a Minecraft world, it's possible to 3D print it out in physical form with a 3D printer and an application called Mineways. Alright, so what I want to do is show you how you can actually pull a 3D file from a Minecraft world. So. First thing you're going to have to do is create a world. I already have a world created, so I'm going to go ahead and open up that world. And what we're going to be able to do is open up the world in a different program called Mineways, and you're going to be able to print whatever you want from that world. Now, this this is Austin's world, but what I want to do is print out this house that I built. So what I'm going to do is Go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and close Minecraft because I find that you can have problems if you try to open up Mineways and work with the world while Minecraft is open. So what I'm going to do is save and quit to title and then quit game. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and open up Mineways. Okay. So this is the free to download program. When you actually download it, it's a zip file. So you just have to unzip it and it's a folder and and that's basically the installation so um, this isn't much when you open it up but this is the program so what I'm gonna do is go file open world and I'm gonna click Austin's first the world that I was in and here it is so now what I gotta do is find my house looks like it's right here right here in the center I'm gonna scroll up with my mouse wheel I'm gonna zoom up and this is what I want I want to print out this house. So what I'm going to do is right click and drag my mouse. 
and I'm gonna click yes alright now I have some height options here how high and how low I wanna go with the print okay so what I wanna do is go at least above the house here that looks okay and I can tell by just looking at the purple pixels here and um, as far as how low I wanna go let's see I want to I want to get some of the ground around it. Um, maybe I want a whole cube around it. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and 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 set it to that height there. And what I'm going to do is go File, Export for 3D Printing. Okay. And I have a couple different options here. What I want to do is make an STL file because I'm going to pull it into um, Tinkercad. Tinkercad is a great program. I've talked about it before, but it's a great free. 3D printing, 3D modeling program that you can use for 3D printing, and it's just great. So I'm going to call this um, Austin's Austin's House Test, and hit Save. I'm going to leave the default options there and click OK. You can see there's a ton of options, and click OK. And I'm going to go ahead and open up Tinkercad, and I got a new project loaded and what I'm going to do is import the STL file so I'm going to click choose file and go to that STL file wherever it is let's see Austin's house test where is the right here it's this blue one but you want your STL file and you want to go ahead and open that up and import it and so you see the world the model has loaded you can see the trees and stuff it's not much to look at but yeah so I, I think it's really cool that you can export your model. Playing Minecraft online through multiplayer can greatly enhance your gaming experience. There's different categories of servers available on the PC version, such as private servers, which are invitation only, family friendly servers, which are good for younger players, whitelist servers, which require one to apply, and non whitelist servers, which anyone can join as long as they have the proper IP address. Servers in Minecraft can also either be griefing or non griefing. Griefing being the ability to destroy someone's buildings or stealing their items. Within these server categories, there's all sorts of different modes available. There's, of course, the online survival and creative modes, but there's also a bunch of different modes like roleplay, where players are encouraged to take on a role such as blacksmith or a cook, PvP or player versus player, where users can battle each other, Special PvP modes like quote-unquote Hunger Games, where players fight to the death in a large map like in the book. Prison servers set in prisons where you must earn money to rank up. Challenge servers with various challenges such as surviving underwater or completing a parkour course. Economy servers featuring currency, shops, and buying of selling of things like land and more so there's all kinds of content online for you to choose from and if you're so inclined you can even create your own server with what's called realms which is a subscription based option offered by Mojang for a monthly fee realms allows you to keep your minecraft world online and always accessible even when you log off let's actually take a look at how one would go about joining multiplayer so I'm gonna click on multiplayer and you see that actually it says scanning for games on your local network um, first thing I want to do is point out that if you have a world open, so I'm just going to open up a, uh, a world that I've been working on, and when that world is open, you can go to the menu, hit escape, go to the menu, and you can click open to LAN, right, and you can click start LAN world, and now someone that's on my same network will be able to actually join in this world, so uh, me and the other player will be in the same world together, and I, I just think that that is so cool you can do that so um, that's one thing you can do but let's go ahead and what we're, what we're gonna do is click on multiplayer and it's scanning for games on a local network it's not finding anything if we want to go out and see what's out there in the world as far as servers what I'm gonna do is go to Google and just type minecraft servers okay and let's see there's minecraft server list.com with hyphens and Looks like I can toggle some of these options here and get some different kinds of games, but let's just see what the top ones are. Let's see, Mythcraft Network. This one looks interesting. So it says right here, the IP is play.mythcraftpvp.com. So actually it has it nice, nicely displayed right here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. 
and within Minecraft I'm going to click add server and I'm gonna in the server address box I'm gonna paste in that link and I can call this what I want I'll call it um, you know myth craft PvP and click done and you can see it has the server here listed and I can click on the play button and I should be able to join in that server and it looks like I'm right on top of someone these are all the new people it looks like and I can go around and explore the server and see what it has to offer so if I want to exit I'm just gonna disconnect so that's basically the the way you join uh, uh, an online server in Minecraft in addition to the content provided by multiplayer servers, a wide variety of user-generated content for Minecraft called mods, which is short for modifications, are available for download, usually free. Modifications of the Minecraft code add a variety of gameplay changes, ranging from new blocks, new items, to entire arrays of mechanisms to craft. The modding community is responsible for a substantial supply of mods that can potentially enhance gameplay, such as minimaps, waypoints, to ones that add to game elements from Pokemon, Portal, and other popular icons. Let's actually take a look at how you can go about adding a mod to your game. Alright, so if you want to actually use a mod with your Minecraft version, what you're going to want to do is go to Google and just type Minecraft Forge. You're going to need Forge, which is, it essentially allows for your Minecraft version to use the mods that you download. Um, one thing you're going to want to do actually before you install this download is you're going to want to update your Java. So just go to Google type Java and you want to go through the steps to update to the latest version of Java. Then what you're going to do is actually run this forge file and you're going to install the client. I'm going to uncheck this and you're going to actually install your forge and click OK. And now um, one one more step obviously is you're gonna want to actually download your mod so um, for this example I'm gonna use journey map and this is apparently I've never tried it before but it is a mod that gives you a map in game so in survival mode you should be able to have a map where you can see where you are which I think is cool so I went ahead and downloaded it and what you're gonna want to do is make sure and I'm using Windows 7, but within Windows 7, you're going to want to make sure that your hidden files are being shown. So I'm going to click Tools, Folder Options, and I'm going to click Show Hidden Files and Folders. And click OK. And open up Minecraft. Now, instead of like usually just hitting Play, um, what I'm going to do is click this little triangle here and make sure that I'm running with Forge here. So I'm going to click Forge and go ahead and click play and and then now you can see in my minecraft that powered by forge and it has all this extra text now so what i want to do is take the the journey map file and i go ahead and navigate to the minecraft folder so c users the user i'm on app data roaming Minecraft and then there's a folder called mods and I'm gonna go ahead and drop in the the mod that I downloaded okay this journey map and then I'm gonna go back and open up Minecraft see if it loaded up let's go ahead and let's see what it looks like I'll go to the world that I designed and you can see now I have a little mini map in the top right and what is it J for journey map Let's see, that's cool, blah, 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 performance click. Ooh, look at this, see, this is cool. This is exactly what I hoped it would be. This actually looks like Mineways, the way you 3D print with Minecraft. But let's go ahead and, how do you get out of this? Click the X, but that's cool. So I got a little mini map now, and it, it'll just help for navigation. So, so I just wanted to show you an example of how to mod. Well, there you have it. That's Minecraft in a nutshell. I I hope I didn't throw too much at you. I tried to get all the different aspects of Minecraft. And like I said, there's just the, the Minecraft universe is huge. But obviously, I wouldn't do all this if I didn't actually love the game, which I do. 
My only criticism of the game is that it's too addicting. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you come back for more. This is Austin Only, signing out. Have a good one.